welcome to Hawkeye's House of Horrors. If you've never been here before, if you have, welcome back. I am Hawkeye. Uh, I'm now going to bring uh, a film review for the next Howling film in that franchise, and that is Howling 6, The Freaks. I uh, finally saw this one. Um, I hadn't seen this one in a long, long time. I uh, didn't remember much from it, but um, I'm going through the well, entire Howling series here. Um, so I'm uh, now on the sixth one. And I'll tell you what, I, uh, I didn't really... I'm not going to give this one a passing grade, but I can definitely see things that are good about it or things that um, some people might really enjoy about this film or uh, lean towards enjoying this film. Uh, but I'm going to go through the goods and the bads uh, about this film. Uh, now, this film was directed by Hope Perello. Now, this is um, the lone howling film in the series that was directed by a woman. And uh, I can see um, when watching the film, okay, she certainly ha does have some skill behind the, the camera. Um, and um, I'm, I, I would definitely say um, the film appears um, or... Perhaps it flows um, better, perhaps, than the last previous uh, Howling films as well. Um, now, uh, Perello had done other films as well. She doesn't have an, uh, a huge, long list of films she's done, but uh, she's done a few other films as well over the course of her career. Um, now, the screenplay was done by Kevin Rock. I believe this was the first uh, screenplay he um, had ever done um, or is credited with. Uh, he also did Warlock, the Armageddon, which was the second Warlock film. I did like that one. That one was good. And he also did Philadelphia Experiment 2. Uh, I have not seen the first, that, that one. The first one I, I saw and I did enjoy. So he seemed to be uh, coming in to, do, to write sequels, uh, Kevin Rock. Now it's based, according to the credits, uh, based on the novels by Gary Brandner. So that's Howling 1, Howling 2, and Howling 3. Now, I never read the third novel in that series, um, but there's certainly some influences perhaps from that novel, um, such as showing some sympathy towards the werewolves, uh, that the werewolves aren't these big uh, monsters that we should be terrified of, and rather in turn showing them sympathy. Now, this film was released on June the 13th, 1991. Um, now, I'm going to jump into the story and uh, some of the actors in the film at this point. Um, now, the story deals with this stranger named Ian Richards, um, uh, played by Brendan Hughes, uh, who strides into this small town. Now, that's kind of what I remembered, um, was this guy, this stranger, hitchhiker guy, lone man walking the highway i think i remembered that and that was about it um now this guy he is is british as well uh and he meets some people in the town uh including the preacher pastor dewey played by jared barkley who to me looks very much like terrence stamp um and um and what he does he brings him over to his place uh to feed and house him and uh, see if this stranger can help him restore his church. He does so and does a quite magnificent job, and they restore the church, and it, it looks quite nice after he completes that. But, of course, the pastor has a lovely daughter named Elizabeth, played by Michelle Matheson. And when you know it, romance blooms between the two. Uh, and then the circus comes into town. Now, uh, I have a few of his books, um, movie reviews by Leonard Maltin. Um, for this film here, he does not really give it, he gives it one and a half stars out of four. Um, but he says this film has some Ray Bradbury overtones, um, which absolutely, yes, I can see it, um, most specifically with this circus, um, and was influenced by Something Wicked This Way Comes, which, if you haven't, I would suggest reading that book uh, and then watching that film from 1983. 
Uh, that might be a film I get to at some point. That one was really good and a great spooky little story written by Ray Bradbury. Um, now, the big draw with this circus is they have this freak show, um, including the likes of Alligator Boy. That's what he's um, claimed to be or they name him. Um, he's, his real name is Winston Salem the uh, Third, played by Sean Gregory Sullivan. And a half man, half woman. And the moves are included in that one, um, named Carl Carlotta, uh, played by Christopher Morley. Uh, and there's others in there as well. Uh, but as the story progresses, we find out that the director is, in fact, actually a werewolf. Um, seeming that this is Howling 6, you're expecting at some point there is going to be a werewolf that shows up, right? There it is him. Um, now, the dude running the circus, his name is Harker, um, which is from Jonathan Harker from Dracula. Hint, hint, what may he be? Um, and Ian, in turn, wants uh, this drifter in his freak show once he finds out that he is a werewolf. Um, but then, keep progressing with the story, Ian is thought to be the this killer in town, killing people off. When all along, it is da-da. You guessed it, it was Harker who was running the circus. He's the one killing people, people. Uh, which leads to a showdown in the circus between Harker and Ian. And it's not a bad showdown. Uh, it's not bad. But that's what it leads to, um, which I like. I, I didn't mind that. Um, and I, I like the fact that um, it's a story having these two monsters, this vampire against this werewolf, um, a battle between the two. Um, and the werewolf is good and the vampire is bad. Um, I like that. It's, it's once again with Howling, um, with the next film, I'm going to maybe take that away, but it's, uh, going against something new, something fresh to the series, um, that hasn't been shown, um, so far. So I do like that a lot. Now the vampire, uh, that comes out, uh, Harker in the end. Um, it definitely first glance or the first thing that pops into mind, okay, he's very much got a Salem's lot look, but really what it is, is it's Nosferatu. That's where the Salem's lot look came from was that film. But I really like that film or that look of a vampire. Um, uh, I, I really like that. So they did a really good job, um, with the look of the vampire in this film. So I'm going to go through the good things in the film and then I'll jump over to things I didn't like or things that brought the film down for me. Um, now, uh, things I like, the acting I found is generally better than the last two in the series. Um, Maybe the one that, that does the best um, is Bruce Payne. He plays Harker. Uh, I remember him from Warlock 3. Now, that film I didn't like. Um, it wasn't all that good. But Payne in that film, he was a highlight. His He did a good job um, in that film there. Um, I think he's very effective in playing the villain. Um, and there being no guessing as to who the bad guy is. Um, more or less, once he's introduced, you're like, okay, he's mysterious as well, just like Ian. Um, but I don't trust this guy. Um, so he does. he's very effective in doing that. Also, I like how this film has a very nice horror setting. That being, you know, the small town and also the circus. Um, now, I like that, but certainly it's nowhere near as good as something wicked this way comes. Or the Toby Hooper the classic Funhouse uh, is much better than this as well. But I really like that setting, the circus in a horror film. I, I really enjoy that. Um, and as I said, I really like how this film has nothing to do with the rest of the film series at all. Although uh, Mary Lou, who was in the previous Howling uh, film, she shows up in this film and she's standing there in the audience um i think it was at the freak show looking at um the people that are in there she's 
in the audience. She doesn't say anything, but she's kind of zeroed in on. She shows up, though, as well. Um, now, the effects in this film, this is definitely a highlight of the film. Um, I think they're pretty good. And they stand up pretty good today uh, as well, the effects. And I think they were done by Steve Johnson, who had worked on Howling 4. And if you didn't see that review, I almost think that was the only thing worth seeing that movie for, were the effects really in one scene. Um, but he also worked on Ghostbusters and Men in Black as well. So he really, uh, when he works on a film, it seems he really um, puts out uh, a good product for the audience uh, in the effects department as well. Now, problems that I had with this film. Um, I found the pre-credit sequence um, before the credits roll. It brings absolutely nothing new um, to maybe a horror watcher, like a horror veteran, like certainly a veteran horror watcher will be bored to tears. Uh, but it, it brings nothing new uh, that I haven't seen a hundred times before in other films. Um, and unfortunately the film kind of got off on the wrong foot with that. It, it's not like that alone ruined the film, but it got off on the wrong foot. There are some fil films that I, I really enjoy and that happens, but it, 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 uh, regains itself or brings something different for something new, which this film does, but uh, I didn't like that pre-credit sequence at all. Um, another thing, um, I'm going to go with as well. And, and I'm not saying he's a horrible actor or <laughs> miscast uh, or whatever, but it was definitely on Hughes's performance as Ian Richards. Um, um, I don't, I don't think he did a, like a poor job um, or he himself ruined the film or anything like that. But I found um, when he was captured by Harker, I find, and then they, um, put him in their own personal jail cell, I found he started to ham it up. And unless your name is Vincent Price or Jack Nicholson, um, there's a short list of guys. Usually when you ham it up, it it, it doesn't turn out well. Uh, unless that's what you're going for. Unless it's the tone you're going for, then boom, all for it. Let's go for it. Um, like, for example, one I just reviewed, um, Bruce Campbell in the Evil Dead movies and show he could ham it up, but they were totally going for that tone. Um, but I found he hammed it up, and that's not the tone they were looking for um, in that scene. Um, I think he did well in the stranger department, this uh, lone guy coming into the town. I think he did well there. Um, but... I did find, and it's not all really on him, but um, the romance that he had between him and Elizabeth, it kind of failed to me. It wasn't, um, it, uh, it, it wasn't a strong point in, in the story, uh, the romance between the two. And then, you know, it's really leaned upon or you really need that to work or the film to work, in my opinion. And it, uh, unfortunately, it didn't for me. Um, I think for me, the way I would have went about it is I think I would have rather her find out that he is a werewolf and then fall in love with him rather than falling in love with him and then finding out he's a werewolf and then saying, well, that's okay that he's a werewolf, but I, I would rather her fall in love with, you know, everything about him rather than just, I don't know, finding out later, if you will. Um, I think it would have worked better the other way. Now, uh, this scene was hilarious to me. Um, when Ian first turns for the audience into a werewolf, uh, to me it was funny. But he knows it's coming. He knows there's a full moon coming. So it's not like, oh, this was out of left field. He decides he's going to have a little snooze as this moon is going to come out. Um, this isn't going to turn out well. Um, so he wakes up and then starts to transform and jumps out a window um, of this preacher's place because um, he's now a werewolf. 
Um, it made me smile because I think they were definitely looking for terror here, uh, but it kind of played a little bit more like a comedy to me. Um, and that I don't think they were going for either. Um, now, one thing, um, this is getting into maybe the third act or certainly later on in the film, something I didn't like, um, and it could have just been rewritten and the film could have still went, uh, went the way it went really, um, is when Ian is locked up in Harker's jail cell, um, the sheriff comes by, you know, the law enforcement. Um, he comes by and he sold a story on Ian by Harker. Um, so the sheriff's like, okay. And just lets Ian rot in Harker's jail cell while he goes out and investigates things. Um, what would have happened is he would have transferred that prisoner to his own jail cell. And then went out and investigated. Um, it, uh, yeah, like that, that right there almost seems like it was written for a 12 year old, um, in my opinion. But it, it, you know, if they transferred him over to his own cell, it's not like there was anything, I don't know, monumental that they needed to keep him in that jail cell. And it didn't make any sense that the sheriff would do that. But you see as well, he's not a very good cop. So, okay, I guess you could maybe let that slide. But then the sheriff is killed. And uh, I guess law enforcement isn't going to help us out with this one, huh? Too bad. Oh, well. Uh, now, the music in the film was done by Patrick Gleason. Uh, he's done over, worked on over 20 projects uh, in film. And the one that jumped out to me, one I watched as a kid, um uh, was the Ewoks, uh, the cartoon. He did uh, the music to some of those episodes. Uh, now, with the music in the film, it was okay, I guess. Um, nothing really to the score jumped out at me at all, unfortunately. And I thought the theme was very repetitive. Um, but anyways, Patrick Gleason did the music for that film. And I think um, one problem I had as well is the second part when it's sort of, you would think it would be gaining momentum and getting even better and picking itself up. Uh, I thought the second part wasn't quite as good as the first part. The first part was a good setup, but the follow through to me um, wasn't quite as good. The ending was good. Um, it was, I don't know, there might be like uh good 45 minute 50 minute chunk there was like uh, not so good here um it just wasn't as good as as i feel it should have been but anyways that's howling six the freaks and certainly this isn't uh whoa no no way this is not the worst or anywhere near the worst uh just misses out on my in my opinion um uh, now i have seen i've seen them the last just this week, I think the last couple of days, I've seen the, the next two or the last two films in the Howling series. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to watch those ones again. So I'm going to just need a little bit more time, let them digest in me, watch them again. And then I'll give a review for the last two Howling films in the series. And then what I think I'm going to do is once I've done all that, I'm actually going to do a ranking of the howling films i'll have reviewed them all there's enough of them and i'm going to rank them and put them from worst to best in my opinion everybody's got their own opinion so you know um somebody out there may have the exact opposite of what i do so but anyways um i enjoyed that um i hope you enjoyed this review um so yeah and uh if you'd like to you could definitely subscribe to the channel I certainly have some other videos uh, that you could check out. That would be cool as well. And if you want to, um, hey, if you want to like, don't be afraid. Just hit that uh, thumb down there. That would be cool. And if you want to comment on anything, you could do that as well. It's always cool to talk movies and film. Uh, one of the things I love in life. So, But anyways, uh, have yourself an excellent day. And until next time, stay scared. 